as many of you know, I'm Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. My name is not Mark, even though I go by 10 Mark, but I'm still called Mark all the time, usually by people just giving me a hard time now. Um, in, I started my channel in 2018, and I just kept thinking of a way, how can I get the community more involved with using their Amigas? Uh, I, I noticed that 80% of the things on the internet, 80% of the things on uh, YouTube were about Amiga gaming, which is great. I love Amiga gaming, absolutely love it. I do it quite a bit. But being that the Amiga was such a creative machine from the beginning, I wanted to help encourage people to get back into using their computers, using their Amigas, to create artwork and, and, and actually do something fun and, and uh, productive with them because they're still so good at doing that. Even the old OCS and ECS machines, so good at doing that. And so I came up with the idea of the Amiga Art Contest in uh, 2019 was the first one, which makes this the fifth year of Amiga Art Contest, which freaks me out because I'm not getting any older. I'm still, you know, young, but five years have passed and I'm still doing the art contest. It's, it's kind of amazing. The first couple of years, I had my friend uh, Vicky, known as Pixel Vixen, help me. Um, she doesn't do it anymore with me. She moved over to Japan, and with the whole time zone thing and her interests changing, um, she kind of got out of the Amiga scene a little bit. And so um, I've been co-hosting with Kevin Saunders from Australia. Now, many of you know Kevin Saunders. He uh, not only did the, uh, the graphics for my, uh, for my show, so every time you see my logo come up, that's a Kevin Saunders work. Um, which is probably his most important work he's ever done. You know, this other stuff is just, you know, yeah, okay, side projects. But uh, his latest game that he worked on, which is Reshoot Proxima 3, I got it, I almost pointed it over there, running on my Amiga 1200, but it's there, it's not there. But absolutely prolific graphic artist. He's, um, well, if you were at the, uh, the A600 meeting that Matthew just did a couple of hours ago, he just announced that Kevin did the graphics and artwork for the interface of the new A600. So he is really, really involved in the Amiga community and in the artistic side and the creative side of the Amiga community. So he makes a great co-host. Co He's a good friend and, and just a wonderful person. We started out small with the Amiga Art Contest, just hand-drawn artwork, like uh, something you do in deluxe paint or personal paint, and then um, uh, photo editing, which is, I put that category in there because that's what I do on the Amiga. You put me behind a mouse and open up deluxe paint, and I can probably draw a smiley face, maybe, maybe a smiley face, but I love photography. I've been a photographer all my life. I love bringing modern JPEG images into my even OCS Amiga and working in ham six mode and just seeing what can be done with, with modern photography with a little Amiga uh, touch to it. And uh, this is something that Kevin Saunders put together here with a bunch of um, previous Amiga artwork. And you can see like this, this is a photograph of uh, Debbie Harry. It was a black and white uh, photograph, full body. I cropped it down and colorized it in uh, kind of a, a, reference, a reverence to uh, Andy Warhol and uh, Debbie Harry and their work that they did with the original Amiga during the uh, original Amiga presentation where he colorized her. And let's see what the other photographs we have in there. This one from our friend Amiga Bill. This is an actual statue, um, just incredible image that he took of this statue. And then he, he cropped in tight on it colorized all the chains, that rust color, because everything I believe was originally just, just, just one color of the statue. Just going and taking a photograph, going and taking an image, and doing something fun, doing something creative, and adding a little bit of your own uh, touch to it. That's the kind of thing that I absolutely love. And then um, many of these are, and we'll, we'll look at some of these closer, are actual just hand-drawn images. Um, like this was a winner a couple of years ago, this absolutely fantastic hand-drawn image. We'll take a closer look at that. Um, this one knocks my socks off right here. Um, <laughs> what people can do on their Amigas, on their 30, 35 year old machines is absolutely unbelievable. And so I want to show you a few things that, uh, that people have done over the years. This is the, the Android I was just talking about right here. 
This is 320 by 256. So this is a nice black screen. It's showing up beautifully here. What's that? Yeah, Indivision. Yep. Really? Well, that's not any fun. Let me try another one. Okay, this is better. We'll try the Android again in a minute, see what's going on with that. Uh, this, this one was, was done by the, uh, the, the winner of the first Amiga Art Contest in 2019. Really prolific uh, artist. Uh, I think he was, he lived in the Ukraine for a while, but he lives in the States now. But just ha literally hand-drawn, beautiful, beautiful colors, beautiful imagery, a nice autumn scene, all done on the Amiga, 100% done on the Amiga. The uh, Indivision is a fantastic product. That's the, uh, the upscaler that Jens makes. And, uh, but the problem with it is, is when it changes screen modes, it kind of moves things around pretty quickly. This is one of our winners from last year. This is uh, uh, Gordian Noonan. He is one of the most creative artists out there. He, in addition to being a professional artist, he also does pixel art on the Amiga, as you can see here, just absolutely gorgeous hand-drawn art. And I understand he also does a lot of art on the Atari ST, but I think we'll forgive him for that because he's so good at the Amiga side. No, Level Lord is the first one. He's what? Yugoslavia, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, my friend. <laughs> um, but just absolutely brilliant work. And even the stuff he does in the 16 colors and the ST is just knock your socks off. Now, this one I love. Uh, this one was done by, I believe, a nine-year-old girl over in England. Um, she was in uh, Norwich Amiga Group. She was there with her dad. And she saw somebody playing with with uh, personal paint over there. And she said, Dad, I want to try it. And so she did. And so she got some pictures of Dumbo. She did another one of Mickey. She sat down with personal paint. And she literally drew that by hand, nine years old, on an Amiga. And, <laughs> you know, that just tugs at the old heartstrings there is what that does. She did such a good job. And uh, maybe you guys have, have heard of uh, this guy before. Let's see, I think this is the right one. Let's see if this is the right one. Nope, that's the wrong one. This is the right one. Some guy by the name of Eric Schwartz. Oh, come on. This is going to make me cry. All right, Eric's not coming up. Let me look at this real quick here. Make sure I've got it trying to start the right program. VT. Eric, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't know why your image is not coming up because it just was a while ago. Multiview is, is great, but I use this program called VT for displaying Amiga images. It actually does a really nice job, and you can set custom resolutions too if. Uh, if the resolution you're trying doesn't quite come up right. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Just had to get the right one. Eric Schwartz, you guys all have heard of Eric Schwartz. He did some incredible animations back in the day. He did a lot of the artwork for the Super Frog game, and he's still involved in the Amiga community. He actually has a mostly monthly Amiga newsletter that if you're a Patreon of his, he's, he writes a monthly PDF Amiga newsletter all about the Amiga scene. I'm going to be doing an episode on that soon. And, uh, but, but yeah, he's still quite involved in the community. But look at the detail of that. He, he did this uh, in very high resolution. I think the original is like um, 1900 by 670 is what he did it in, but it was all done on an actual Amiga. I brought this down a little bit to, uh, to a smaller resolution so it would display properly. But what, what quality, what quality. And he's got a style all his own, that's for sure. Uh, there's my co-host. This is Kevin Saunders. Da -da 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 -da. Never mind. 
I should just turn this monitor on so that doesn't show up right on the screen. Uh huh. It chokes. <laughs> the Amiga is just too powerful to handle all this. Uh huh. Well, on the broadcast, it looks good, huh? This one does. But when they show up here, they don't show up here. Ah. <laughs> okay, maybe Amiga has some funky screen modes. Okay, we'll try some more. This one will come up fine. This one. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This one is one of the winners from, from last year. This one is just incredible, called No Signal. Again, it's just uh, Amiga OCS modes, uh, 320 by 256. But just the, the, the personality and the feeling behind it is just incredible. And it was based on some other artwork that he showed me of a guy that, who didn't have a television for a head. But he added his own creativity. He added his own um, personality to it. And at the bottom of the screen there, you can see it almost looks like, like television static on our old CRT televisions from back in the day. Um, just really, really creative what he does. And we'll take a look at some of the uh, photos. This one is beautiful right here. I think this, this was done uh, all on an Amiga here. And look at the detail he's got in there. This is from a photograph of, uh, I can't remember if it's his cat's head or something like that. And then, of course, obviously his cat's eyeball does not look like an Amiga Boing Ball. So that's what he brought into it was the, uh, the reflections on the, the, the animal's eye with the, uh, with, oh, my goodness, what a beautiful image, huh? What a beautiful image. This is a cool one right here. This is by, done by the gentleman who makes uh, RNO transfer, and uh, he makes uh, a lot of the different RNO programs that work both on, well, uh, uh, they work on MorphOS, on 68K Amigas, and the whole uh, Amiga 4.1 platform. Um, really, really does a good job, JNO. And uh, he took the uh, photograph of the Amiga mouse and then put his own little touches right, b b uh, right in front of it. It's just fantastic what he does. This was done with a Digiview. We all know what the Digiview is, the slow scan digitizer. Um, and this is, um, was done in England by our friend who does the Amiga, cho Amiga show, uh, Anthony Jarvis. And the way he did this, from what I understand, he had his Digiview out there. And people were just playing in the park and having fun. And he'd take the, the red image and then turn it, and the green image, and turn it, and take the blue image. And in the meantime, people were moving around and doing what they do in the park. So it captured just certain colors of people. The ones who were standing more still are more solid, but some of the ones who were moving around have this, this cool, like, spirit ghost effect. And what, a, what an interesting thing to do, to take a piece of, you know, 35-year-old technology and put a spin on it like this, where it's, just, it's capturing images that moved. This one just really, really moved me. And obviously, the tree wasn't moving, so it's nice and solid there. Let's see what we got here. One more photo. Oh, this is the one that Amiga Bill did, a nice close-up of it. This is a statue. And, you know, <laughs> tell me that doesn't just have an impact on you. That just doesn't scream out to you. And uh, he did a, Bill did a really fantastic job on that. He's a talented artist, in addition to being a talented videographer. Animations are always absolutely fun on the Amiga. Uh, the, our friend Jojo073, he did this at animation, and uh, we'll let it run through twice here. Oh, heebie-jeebus, okay. It, was, it being, was it being broadcast on the internet? Okay, give me a second. I'm good. I, no, not the monitor, but it's showing up fine on the monitor. So these fine folks here, if it doesn't come up on the projector, at least they'll be able to see it here. I know all of our eyes are very old, but you'll be able to at least see it. 
There we go. Look what he did here. Isn't that just so much fun? And this was a, a promotion for one of his, uh, his businesses there. <laughs> yeah, so he did a fantastic job. Uh, JoJo's a very prolific Amiga artist, too. He has a YouTube channel, and he'll often uh, do pixel art in deluxe paint just step by step right on his YouTube channel. You can just watch him creating these incredible images right on YouTube. He really does a great job. Uh, this one, uh, if you guys know who Trista Bites is, over in, uh, over in the UK, she has a, a Twitch channel, and she's a very prolific. Uh, she she does, hosts a lot of show over there in the UK, and she's just a sweetheart. And she always calls herself a Muppet face. She says she's Muppet-faced. And so <laughs> she had this, uh, this image of her in, in a series of four panels morphing into Red Fraggle. And I got in touch with her. I said, hey, uh, well, Bex is her name. I said, can I take those images and actually have you morph on the Amiga using Morph Plus? And she's like, sure, Doug, go ahead. <laughs> so that's Trista literally morphing into Red Fraggle using uh, Asdig's Morph Plus software. And it was one of the first commercially available for consumers morphing packages out there. Really great stuff. And uh, this is my good friend, Pixel Vixen. This is one of the images that she did. And uh, I just thought this was really, really, oh, it's only coming up on the small screen there. But you can see it there. She's riding in a car with Tokyo going by in the background. Really neat. Let's take a look at some of the newer stuff, though. I want to throw a little bit of that in there. So the way that I do the art contest, guys, is people will send me artwork starting in June up until this year, up until November 11th. That's the deadlines for this year's art contest. When they send it to me, I don't look at it because I want to be surprised. I take it, I save it on my computer, I don't even pay any attention to it, I don't look at it, I don't want to be influenced by it. But this year, because we're getting pretty close to the end of the contest, I wanted to look at a few things, and my goodness, I was just absolutely floored with what a couple of these people sent in. This is our friend uh, uh, Gordian. This is called The Gambler. Very, very Amiga-esque right there. And uh, my son Daniel thought this was a really, really cool image. He asked me to put this one up. Just love it. So this is one of the new contributions for this year for hand-drawn. And, oh my, this one. This one, uh, Marcus Gorshin. Okay, who knows how to pronounce his name? Joran Saif? I think that's Joran Saif. Come on, up on the screen. Oh, come on, on the big screen, please. Does it look okay on yours? Okay, if you can look at it here, look at the color palette that he used. Look at the color palette on that face and the eye. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this as the background image for my Amiga 4000. It's that good. I may even use it on my, uh, on my PC. Just an absolutely phenomenal hand-drawn image. Just, of course. Really? <laughs> yeah, so beautiful. What talent these people have. Much more talent than I have, absolutely. All I do is host the show and judge it. I can't create some of this stuff. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's see, John Percos. And I think there was one more, Marcus Becker. No, I didn't want to do that one. All right, so that's a little bit of, of uh, the hand-drawn. Now, let's look at a little animation, uh, the new stuff. H. Baraldo. H. is an absolutely awesome guy, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's actually won prizes in the contest two times. Last year, he hand-drew the introduction to uh, Dragon's Lair 2, uh, Singe's Castle hand-drew every single frame and then combined the animation 
with, uh, with, a, with, a, with an audio file of the introduction, synced them together. It was just incredible. And he, he won uh, first place grand prize. But this is his contribution for this year. And I think you guys all know who Tintin is. But uh, oh, it's not animating on the big screen. But, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that just absolutely fantastic? All done on the Amiga. And um, I have a Facebook page. It's called Amiga Artwork. Any of you guys, I mean, we're all old and old people, so we all have Facebook. Now we're not young and use just Instagram. Um, I have a, a Facebook page called Amiga Artwork where we talk about, well, Amiga Artwork. And H actually shows us step by step. He'll post pictures of the step by step of creating the image and partially colored images. And so you can see the process he uses to create these animation files, and they just knock my socks off. I still watch, he, he, he did a Pink Panther animation. I love the Pink Panther, as in the Pink Panther, not, uh, not the movie Pink Panther. Um, I still watch that all the time, so good. Now this one, I hope this comes up on the big screen here. This one is uh, Kevin Saunders. Now Kevin can't technically win the contest because he's a judge. That just wouldn't be fair. Oh, rats, not on the big screen. But take a look at what he did. Again, just on the Amiga, created on the Amiga. That is just unbelievable. And the, if you want to see it up closer, I'll have, I can have it playing on my Amiga 1200 later. But just the amount of detail and thought he put in to the little tiny details, you know, of the, the face being scanned in as it goes back and forth. It scans in over there just perfectly put together. I wish that I could, I wish I had a tenth of that talent. And let's see. We've got Gideon. This one is uh, Gideon decided to create a picture if um, The Last of Us was done on the Amiga, how it might look. Oh, rats, it won't come on the big screen. But if you can see that, that's Ellie from The Last of Us looking into a city while something's burning in the background there. And I just thought that had a really, really neat aesthetic. Because, you know, when you do an Amiga animation, you don't need to have everything flying all over the screen. Sometimes it's the subtlety that's really nice. Uh, like, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, he did one called uh, Peter Cushing Makes a Potion. And it's a, a, just a, almost a wireframe picture of Peter Cushing. And he's creating some kind of potion from some movie he was in, and all of the animation was done just with color cycling. Nothing moving at all, just color cycling. And it looked so unbelievably good. Really impressed with his work, too. And if I'm getting these people's names wrong and they're yelling at me online, that's okay. Now, let's see. I think we have audio going on the Amiga, too. We also have a music and mod category where people can create music on their Amiga as we've done for centuries now. And it's not just limited to mod files. It's not just limited to Octomed or, or Protracker or whatever we do. But if you want to use your Amiga as a MIDI tool and you're creating music on using your MIDI instruments but using the Amiga, absolutely 100% valid because you're still using the Amiga as the creative tool. Now, this one, we'll play just a little bit of this one. This one's called Sadness. Oh, do we have any, hey Bill, do we have any audio we can turn up for, because uh, the guys here can't hear it. They, this slider, which slider? Well, Ratso. Trust me, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. We'll move on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no worries. Uh -oh. Music.
Okay. So much for the audio part of our presentation today. I don't think we're going to be going through that anymore. But the, the, the kind of music that people create on the Amiga and contribute to the art contest is just absolutely mind-numbing. And mod files, they still blow my mind because they're these, you know, 500K, maybe a one megabyte file that'll play back on an Amiga 1000 with just a little bit of memory. But it sounds so good coming out of the Amiga. It sounds so rich and real, and our little uh, Paula chip just su does such a fantastic job with, with music. I really, really am happy that we added a, a mod category, even though we can't listen to it because it sounds horribly staticky. 3D, we've all been familiar with the, uh, the 3D that's been done on the Amiga over the years. Back in 1988, when I first got my Amiga, I was talking to my computer teacher, my technology teacher, who's a very smart guy, Paul Stalter, and, and I was telling him about ray tracing and 3D modeling on the Amiga. And he was a, he started out as a Commodore 64 guy, but he ended up being a PC guy. And he's like, ray tracing? 3D modeling? What's that? It just wasn't a thing that was easily doable on a PC in 1988 where in 88 we had uh, Turbo Silver and, um, and a couple of Sculpt 3D that were just creating these incredible 3D images, um, which of course would take sometimes a day, day and a half to render, but nobody else was doing it on a home computer. This is uh, one of the ones, this is a kind of a neat story. This guy I met on uh, Twitter, I believe. He would just happened to see one of my posts about Amiga artwork um, a year or so ago. And he said, you know, I used to do 3D imaging on the Amiga years ago. He says, I haven't touched it in, you know, 15, 20 years. He says, but I think I still have some old images on floppy of stuff that I did back in the 90s. I said, hey, that's fine. You don't have to create it today. If you created it 20 years ago, send it in. Fine. So this is something that he created years ago. He says he, he even had written down at one point in time, the translation of that text up there in the corner. He says he doesn't remember what it is now, but, uh, but uh, just absolutely beautiful. The amount of detail in there, just really, really cool. Imp in a bottle is what he calls this one. This is my good friend, Kevin Quattro, who you guys might know as Q, not that Q. He's the, a good Q, not an evil Q. He's a, um, a prolific 3D artist. He actually does it professionally too, but for fun, he still loves to use Lightwave, and sometimes he'll create some Lightwave images on the Amiga, do it entirely created on the Amiga, then bring those files over to Lightwave on the PC so they render in three minutes instead of three hours. But he's got a nice 68060 now, and he does he still does a lot of the rendering right on his Amiga. But this was just rendered in uh, probably Lightwave. He probably did this one in just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. This next one's another one from our friend Anthony Jarvis at uh, with the Amiga Show, and this one you guys will recognize as a uh, a Tron rectifier. I love the neon colors in this. The OCS Amigas were so good at emulating neon. Anything that was created in those neon colors, I just think it, that's neat because they look so 80s, so 80s and early 90s. It's just really, really a neat effect. And I think he did a fantastic job in the, the shadow of the rectifier in there. Jeez, what, what fun, what fun. And so many of these, the, the artwork that we looked at today, these people wouldn't have been doing anything with artwork on their Amiga. A couple of them, they, they do it you know, semi-professionally. They do it. They've got YouTube channels. But probably at least half to three-quarters of the people, they'll email me and they'll say, hey, I haven't touched deluxe paint in 25 years. He says, but I was hearing about the art contest and I wanted to try it again. And now they're creating stuff all the time, putting it on Amiga artwork all the time. Uh, we've got some people, uh, my, my friend uh, Helgi, uh, he never really did pixel art before. He, he was, he's a musician, he's created a lot of music files. He does a great job with that. Uh, one of his old um, music files I used to have as the introduction to my show. Um, but he got involved on Amiga Artwork, my Facebook page, and he thought, you know, I want to I wanna try pixel art. I want to start to get into it. And so we've been able to watch Helgi go from 
you know, just absolute beginner to improving over time and the new pictures he posts to the, the Facebook page, each one is a little better than the last. And it's just neat to see that people are influenced and they want to actually do this. They want to actually participate and get their Amigas out of the closet and create artwork again. Really, really a lot of fun. Let's see if we've missed anything in here. 3Ds, photos, let's get this back up. So, the, in the past, what I've done for prizes, we've always had like a grand prize best of show, and it's always been something cool, like a, a nice expensive part, and our friends at Amiga Kit have, have donated before, our friends at um, AEON in the past have, have donated personal paint and image effects licenses, um, and we've had people like uh, RetroReady.One donate things, and um, Retro Rewind, he's always been a great, uh, great sponsor too. But what I ran into is shipping these parts out. You know, I, I have them usually donated to me. Some of them I buy myself, but I have them donated to me, ship them to me, and then I'm shipping them out, and it's costing 40, 50, 60 dollars to ship this out. And I'm like, huh, what am I gonna do about that? And I don't mind, you know, it's, it's absolutely worth it. But then I thought, everybody likes money. I've known over the years that money, just in general, people are like, yeah, I'll take money. So this year, all the prizes are cash prizes, payable via PayPal or whatever. And um, I announced this on Amiga Bill's show uh, back in uh, September. I, I was a guest there, and I was talking about the Amiga Art Contest. And one of the uh, guests on there, one of the, 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 the people who were on there, uh, D. Mackey is his handle. He said, hey, Doug, I want to pitch in 100 bucks for the grand prize just to make it just a little more special. So the grand prize this year, 200 American dollars for the grand prize winner. You know, that, I'm just a little Amiga guy, and <laughs> now I'm handing out cash. First place winners, in each category, there's always a first place and a second place winner. First place winners, $50 cash, just sent right to their accounts. And second place, $25 cash, sent to their accounts. And I just, I think people will enjoy that, because then they can spend it on anything they want to, hopefully Amiga-related hopefully with like Aeon or Amiga Kit or something, but um, they're able to do whatever they want. And we always have like a third place honorable mention too. And generally I'll, I'll print out their picture on my nice Epson printer and I'll, I'll mail them a copy of the picture along with a nice certificate, you know, of winning the contest. I try to have fun with that. I love doing it. I love how it involves much of the community. I love how people are, are, you know, they tell me all the time, oh, we can't wait for the show, we can't wait for the reveal. And every single show and every single reveal, we've got some kind of problem, you know. Um, the Amiga reboots in the middle of it, the audio goes out, and that's just one of those things. It's part of the charm of the show, I guess. But uh, we'll try to make it flawless this year. So uh, I love doing it, and I hope to continue doing it. And uh, I'm open to any questions anybody has about the Amiga art contest or anything else Amiga or anything about me. Oh. Here's a nice young man with a question. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your name, sir? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We have a lot of people who, who use the Amiga uh, Next Gen. Uh, this one right here, that was done on an Amiga 5000. And um, all of Helgi's, I mentioned my friend Helgi who does uh, music. He does all of his music on his Amiga 1000. I think he's got a 5000 now. You probably know who Helgi is. Yeah, 1000 Helgi, Helgi Falheim. He, he makes himself uh, quite well known. Um, but yeah, several of these pictures were done, are, were done and generated on uh, one of the, uh, the newer Amigas. And absolutely, WinUAE is fine. Uh, MorphOS, that's close enough to an Amiga. An A600, this is why I asked the question when Matthew was up earlier, can we save the images and export them to our you know, regular PCs or whatever? You can use that to create images. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah? How fun. Any other questions? 
Anyone? Anyone? Going once? Going twice? Trevor wins. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Go to www.amigaartwork.com for more information. Uh, all contributions can be emailed to art at amigaartwork.com. And my name is not Art. My name is not Mark. It's Doug. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone.